The Sega Dreamcast can output 480p using a VGA cable, but many people these days prefer using component video, either on CRTs or through modern scalers. While sure you could use VGA to component converters if you'd like, now all you need is a single cable. Let's check it out. These cables are about as basic as it gets in a good way. Plug them in, set your resolution, and power on your console. That should be all you need to know, but the Dreamcast has a history of weird incompatibilities as a result of outputting multiple resolutions and signal types. So let's start by connecting the cables directly to a Sony BVM D32, as the D-series BVMs often had issues with the Dreamcast signal. And that's it. It just works. There's nothing else to worry about. So this is something that's actually more of a big deal with the Dreamcast than with other consoles, and let me demonstrate why. Here is another cable option, and you can see over on the left, the sync kind of curls the image up. And that's due to the way that most sync combiner circuits work when you're using something like the Dreamcast's weird VGA output signal. I don't want to get too much into the detail with that. I have much better technical explanations in my other Dreamcast videos. But the point is that when you're using the new Retro Gaming Cables component, you don't have these sync curls up in 480p mode at all. And also, here's a game switched to the 480i mode that shows it is also compatible with D-series BVMs. And once again, I'm picking on these monitors because these were the ones that had the most compatibility issues with previous Dreamcast cables. But you can see there's no weird sync issues, the game looks totally fine, and that seems to work with no issues at all. And while I know this absolutely should not matter at all for the cable itself, I wanted to show everybody that it is compatible with the games that are 16 by 9. You would just then have to manually set your display to that setting. But there you go. Now, just to prove that in 480p mode, you can get both widescreen and normal 4x3 output with this. And it even works with A-series BVMs in both 15 kilohertz, which is 240p 480i modes, as well as the 480p mode as well, and that's even using the original rare and incredibly incompatible BKM68X card. So basically, if it's compatible with these, it should be compatible with everything. And of course, it'll work with any consumer grade TV that has component video inputs. Now, as I showed in another video, you definitely don't ever want to plug old consoles into analog inputs of flat panels because of lag reasons. I'll reference the other video in the notes if you want to learn more about that. But consumer grade CRTs are going to look awesome. Most are only going to support 15 kilohertz, though, but in a game like Third Strike, you could essentially just get yourself an arcade quality look just by using these cables and plug it directly into the monitor. And it's really worth trying out. Some games you need to hold a button combo, like this is start and left as the console's booting in order to get into 240p mode, but other games could just run in 240p. If you're using a CRT, light gun games are also compatible, which is really awesome because this is just one of the best uses of a big old consumer grade CRT and some component cables, getting the highest quality signal you can while also retaining compatibility for light gun games. Now, of course, there is the whole 480i debate, and this is really up to personal preference. It's my opinion that most Dreamcast games look absolutely amazing on a VGA CRT monitor running in 480p, and I'm not sure if many games would look just right on a consumer CRT that doesn't support 480p. But honestly, as you can see here, this is absolutely amazing. And if I had a choice between playing on like a 17 inch VGA CRT monitor in 480p or this giant 36 inch consumer grade CRT in 480i, I'm picking this experience every time. So while 480p is gonna always look a little bit better, it absolutely has its place to run this in 480i on a consumer TV. And I think there's a lot of other people that might really just want to use a CRT experience. But that's kind of the awesome thing about these cables is you could use them with scalers or consumer TVs or RGB monitors or anything else. So you could absolutely have that, use these in component on a consumer TV for a light gun experience, but then also flip it into 480p mode into your Tink 5X or really any other scaler or 480p compatible device. But that's what we're gonna check out next, how they look through scalers. 
I'd like to talk a bit about performance, but before I'm able to do that, I need to back up a moment and just very quickly go over how the Dreamcast outputs its signal. If you're looking for a deep dive, check out the other videos I did, but a basic overview is the Dreamcast outputs 15 kilohertz signals over composite, S-video, and RGB. 15 kilohertz is just a way of explaining 240p and 480i. And if you're using a CRT, I'm sure those are gonna look great. However, the Dreamcast also has the ability to output 480p only over a VGA cable. Now, what this cable is doing is allowing you to switch back and forth between RGB and VGA. You have to do that with the console powered off, of course. But no matter what the signal is being output from the Dreamcast, it's being converted to component video. So really, the only thing to look at in regards of performance is how well it does that conversion from RGB or VGA to component video. And we'll run it through the RetroTINK 5X. And as you can see, it doesn't really matter if you're using generic or any of the DTV modes. It really looks great. And in fact, if you put it side by side with the DC Digital, which is the true digital to digital HDMI solution for the Dreamcast in internal installation, it absolutely holds up well. So really, there's not much else to say about these. They do a great job with the conversion, both with compatibility and quality. And as long as retro gaming cables continues to use shielded cable, as they always do, then there should never be a decline in quality. So overall, these things perform great. While I think these cables are awesome, component video is not gonna be the best solution for everybody's setup. So I did wanna show some different alternatives that are out there that you could get today that also work really well. If you need other signals besides component video, or if you need both, you could consider getting one of Retro Gaming Cable's other products, an RGB SCART version that's also switchable. So in its 480i mode, it's essentially just the same as a regular RGB SCART cable, but when you put it into its 31 kilohertz 480p mode, then a sync combiner activates and this outputs 480p. So here's that SCART cable in 480p mode, once again, working fine on a D-series BVM. And as you could tell by the interlacing lines, here is it compatible with 480i mode as well. So this is a good SCART cable that should be compatible with all displays. And as a note, that SCART cable also works on A-series BVMs in both 480i and 480p modes with no sync issues whatsoever. And once again, this is with the original, very incompatible 68X card. One kind of fun bonus, if you buy this cable and you have multiple different displays that plug it into, you could also just get a RetroTINK transcoder. You can get the RGB to comp, and using this cable, you could have all the signals. You could either have RGB SCART or component video, and it would be compatible with everything that both of those other solutions would be compatible with. As a note, Retro Access also sells an RGB SCART cable with a switch on it. I would just avoid any of the RGB SCART cables without a switch because they're going to be only 15 kilohertz. Unless, of course, you know that you're only going to be using it on a display that does not support 480p. And I also would avoid any kind of fly-by-night eBay sellers for these things because while there are some other sellers that do very good quality cables, you really want to go with a company that's consistent. So stick with the main ones, especially when it comes to weird signals like the Dreamcast. Depending on your target device, you could save a little bit of money by picking up just a basic VGA cable for the Dreamcast and also combining it with an HD15 to SCART. But as I showed before, depending on your display or scaler, this may or may not be compatible. This will almost surely work with the OSSC or RetroTINK 5X unless you get one that was made bad or something bad off the assembly line. And I guess it would be cheaper, but if you're watching this video looking for a component video solution, this probably is something that you've tried before and it's either working fine or it's not. But I definitely wanted to show this as another option just in case. Because if you're mainly using VGA CRT monitors or scalers, then this is actually a pretty decent solution. Now, if you want the absolute best quality signal from your Dreamcast, you could have an internal HDMI mod done to it. But that is a completely different use case. We're talking about just plugging a cable into whatever Dreamcast you want versus cracking open your console and doing a pretty complicated installation. Now, of course, anytime you get a true digital to digital conversion of the signal, you will get better quality than any analog to digital conversion. And that'll start to get more noticeable as more of us go to 4K scaling or 8K and beyond. But an analog to digital conversion certainly isn't bad and these cables do a great job. 
So if you really want an HDMI output from your Dreamcast, I would think about a couple of different things. If the Dreamcast is your favorite console or you're just a crazy person like me and you want the absolute pixel perfect best signal, yeah, check out my video on the DC Digital and see if that's something that you'd be willing to do. If not, you really have two other paths. First, do you have other analog outputting consoles that you want to convert to HDMI? If so, then you're going to want to get a scaler like the RetroTINK 5X, and the cables that we showed today, any of the ones here, will be an excellent choice. And that scaler will be great because it'll work with all of your consoles. But if you just want your Dreamcast to be connected to HDMI and all of the other consoles you use already have an HDMI output, you could get a plug and play solution. But I'll warn you, most of the ones you find on Amazon are absolute garbage. They use unshielded cables on the inside, the circuits are meh at best, but there are a few of those analog to digital conversion cables out there that do a good job with HDMI. At that point though, you do have to ask yourself, what about the resolution? because the highest resolution the Dreamcast outputs natively is 480p. So if your panel supports good 480p scaling, and you really just need one console, your Dreamcast, to output HDMI, sure, take a look at those. However, if your panel does not do a good job scaling 480p, you're gonna to wanna to go through a scaler anyway, making one of these cables probably the best choice for you. So it's a lot of context as to what your setup and your needs are, but hopefully I've provided enough info to let you know if this is the cable you want or any of the other ones that I showed. My conclusion for this video is about as simple as it gets. If you want a component video cable for your Dreamcast, buy these. They're compatible with everything I threw at it, the quality is good, and they're fairly priced considering what you get versus the alternatives. So overall, I just really liked them and I wanted to make sure this video was detailed just to go over all of the things that could have gone wrong, especially because those are problems that a lot of us may have run into in the past. But as you saw, I threw everything at them and they seem to work fine, so these are great cables to get. If you liked what you saw here and you want to support my work and especially the behind the scenes research that I do where I help people develop products and help get those products introduced to everybody in the retro gaming scene, please consider supporting in absolutely any way possible. Monthly support services like Patreon are by far the best way to help, but just simply clicking on affiliate links and buying the same stuff that you would have bought anyway at the same price is another massive help and that's the stuff that keeps the channel like this going. Also, if you want to get kept in the loop of everything going on in the retro gaming scene, check out the weekly podcast available absolutely everywhere audio and video podcasts are found. That's it for this time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.